Then we basically solved if we had something equal something, correct? So it was a fraction equal to fraction, and we could solve everything linearly. Now, we're going to go through quadratic ones today, and ones that aren't full fraction equals full fraction. So if I look at example 1, or example 3a here, it's 4 over 1 plus 2 over x equals 6 over 1 plus 3 over x. Do you agree? So, with these ones, we need to get common denominators first. Because before, we could just make sides be common denominators. Now, we still need to make all the denominators the same. Whether we have more than two denominators or if we still only had two, we have to make all of our denominators the same. So, I have 1, I have x, I have 1, I have x. So, what could I make them all be? x. So, the first one, I'm going to multiply by x. i got to move this down because I can't see it. The second one I'm going to leave be over x. This one I'm going to multiply by x. Do I need to multiply the x's by 1? Is that going to change anything? No. Nah, so I don't have to do that. Oh, scratching my forehead. The pug head. What is wrong with you? Okay, so we're going to get 4x over x plus 2x over, 2 over x equals 6x over x plus 3 over x. So the next thing we have to do is get everything on the left together, everything on the right together. Because remember, we can't cross over either side until, or drop the electric fence, until we have denominators equal to each other. Right? So we're going to have 4x plus 2 over x equals 6x plus 3 over x. Now my denominators actually equal each other. We agree? So when my denominators equal each other, I can just drop the denominators off, but I first have to state MPVs. x cannot equal 0. Now if this denominator equals this denominator, I can say that this numerator equals. So I'm not just dropping the, the denominators off. I'm saying if this denominator equals this one, then this numerator must equal this one. So that's why I can write them as equal to each other. 4x plus 2 must equal 6x plus 3. I still don't have any squares. It's still linear. What did I tell you to do when you have an x on both sides? Pick one and move it, right? Don't spend 70 years trying to figure out which one. Pick one and move it. So I'm going to move the 4x by subtracting it. And I'm going to get 2 equals 2x plus 3. And then I'm going to subtract 3. And I'm going to get negative 1 equals 2x. Divide by 2. x equals negative 1 half. And what I need to do is still follow behind with my MPVs. x can't equal 0. If my answer was my NPV, I would have to cross it out and say it can't be that and say it's extreme. Now yesterday, remember I went through it with you how you could check it algebraically. You could plug the negative a half in and see if left side equals right side. Or you could also check it with your calculator. So we're going to practice checking it with our calculator. In Y1, we're going to put in 4 plus 2 over X. And in Y2, we're going to put in 6 plus 3 over X. Remembering if you have the older calculators, you're going to have to put this in brackets. If you have the new calculators, you're going to go alpha y equals enter. So type it into y1, y2. y1, y2. A lot harder. So we look at b. This one's over 1. This one's over 1. Can I make them be the same? Yes, but how? Multiply by x minus 1, that's it, right? Like I can't make, I can't multiply the 1 by like x minus, right? That doesn't work. That would be a negative x. So when you have one of them is a monomial, which is a 1, the other is a binomial, the only way you can make them be each other is by multiplying them by each other. So I would multiply this one by, so I'm going to do it over here because I need space because I'm going to do a quadratic formula as well. So I'm going to go x over 1 and I'm going to multiply it by x minus 1 and x minus 1 plus 2 over x minus 1, and I multiply by 1. Does multiplying by 1 do anything? 
No. So do I have to show that step? Nope. And then I have 4 over 1, and I'm going to multiply by x minus 1 and x minus 1. So the top, I can distribute. Do I distribute the bottom even if I could? There's no point. It's going away, right? The denominator is going to go away. So if you're doing extra work to it, you're just wasting your time. So I'm going to get x squared. Uh-oh, life has gotten a little more advanced. x squared minus x over x minus 1 plus 2 over x minus 1 equals 4x minus 4 over x minus 1. Now the left is both over x minus 1, so I can write the whole thing over x minus 1. And I get x squared minus x plus 2 equals 4x minus 4. Now we're back to those same questions before. If I have the denominators equal, what can I do? Get rid of them and actually just write the top equal to each other, the numerator. So I go x squared minus x plus 2 equals 4x minus 4. Now until now, we haven't had a squared, have we? We've just had linear, so we can just get x by itself. We agree? It doesn't matter what math class you were in last year, you would have done quadratic formula, which is what we're going to use to solve these. Now, the quadratic formula is on our formula sheet, and it's written like this. So I'm just going to write it up here so you have it. It's written like this. 4, it's on the bottom left of your quadra on your formula sheet. It says 4, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. For that, I can use x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac the whole entire numerator. Over 2a. Well, today's the day. All right. So it gives you a hint on the formula sheet. It says it has to be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Am I currently in equals 0 form? No. So I need to move the 4x and the 4 minus 4 over to the other side. Because I cannot use that formula unless I'm in that form. So I'm going to subtract 4x and I'm going to add 4. So then I'm going to get x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Now am I in the form? Yeah. In that form, it says whatever's in front of the x squared is a, whatever's in front of the x is b, whatever's at the back is c, correct? Mm -hmm. So, what's in front of my x squared? One. A 1. So I know a equals 1. What's in front of my x? A negative 5. So I know b equals negative 5. What's at the back? 6. six. So c equals 6. Okay, so it even tells you that when you have an x squared, it has to be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. It hints it to you, right? Then we can plug it into our formula. Our formula is this. So we're going to get x equals negative, what's b? Negative 5. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 6, all over 2 times 1. Right? Mm -hmm. Then we have x equals negative a negative 5 actually makes it be 5, plus or minus. Now you're going to type this whole thing into your calculator, the whole square root thing. So go ahead and do it. Square root of bracket. You type it in exactly how it looks. Square root of bracket, negative 5 squared, minus 4, bracket 1, bracket 6. That's what you're doing, Ian, right? Huh? Exactly. Type what's in that square root. It's saying error, non-real Then you mess up how you type it. So square root of bracket, negative 5, bracket squared. You need to type the negative 5 in brackets. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, look, that is what people mess up. You put it in all at once. 
Nope, just the square root. There is no plus or minus sign, so the only thing we can do all at once is the square root. Why are you guys dividing by two? I just want the square root function. Oh, so five. It's one. Well, how can we get sixty-one? Okay, can we stop and actually listen to what Mrs. Lepp is saying? I literally just want square root. I don't want the five plus. I don't want the five minus. I don't want you to touch the five. I don't want the plus or minus sign. I don't want the dividing by two. I don't want any of that because I didn't say that. What I said was, I literally just want you to go square root bracket. Ne there we go. Negative five squared minus four times one. To there. That is all I want to do. Okay. So we get one over two. The only thing, quiet and listening, so I don't have to repeat myself a few times, like I just did. The only thing you can put all in at once is the square root symbol. Because you don't have a plus or minus sign, and the entire thing is divided by 2. So you can't do the square root and divide by 2, because the whole top is divided by 2, right? You can't go 5, negative, you can't go five plus or minus, there's no plus or minus plus. So the only thing you can take, put into your calculator in one step, is that square root and everything under it. That's it. Oh crud, I didn't... Try that one out. Did I not record the whole... Ah. Did I record this? Yeah, I'm recording right now. You paused it and ran up the phone. Oh, the phone. That, but then I didn't finish it. This is how you finish this. All right. Then you come over here, and the, you know, what a debacle that phone is. And then you come, no! These are my classes. They're great. Back to here. Um, x plus 1, x minus 1 is my common denominator. The 2 gets distributed into the first bracket, and I hit an end bracket, and I end. And then I rewrite. Okay, so try it out. Oh, I didn't push it. 3x oh. minus 3. Now you get x plus 1 in the top. And then we, we write it all over one denominator. And we get 3x minus 3 plus x plus 1. Right? equals, and we're going to FOIL this part, 2x squared minus 2x plus 2x minus 2, x plus 1, x minus 1. These two cancel. I was like, because they do. Um, okay, we have one denominator, right? Gustle, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So we have one denominator. Before we ditch it, we're going to say x cannot equal plus or minus 1 because we want to keep that. If we have denominator equals denominator. Brad, I'm wearing a mask. I can go numerator equals numerator. So I can go 3x minus 3 plus x plus 1 equals 2x squared minus 2. Right? Why can't I just drop the denominators off? What's the problem? What's the problem? What's your immediate issue with this thing? You okay? Yeah. Are you foiling this or something? Okay. I'm just trying to bring you back. I'm trying to read. So we're going to get 3x and 1x is 4x. Minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2. Shh. 2x squared minus 2. And then in order to use the quadratic formula, I need to be in ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So I'm going to move these over to the x squared. So I'm going to subtract 4x and add 2. So I'm going to get 0 equals 2x squared minus 4x, and the 2s actually cancel, so I'm left with a plus 0. The reason why I want to write the plus 0 is because I still need a c value. Because 2 minus 2 is 0. So I get a, b, 
C, C, and you can use the space over here, that's fine. I'm going to get x equals negative a negative 4 plus or minus b squared, so negative 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times 0 all over 2 times 2. So I get 4 plus or minus what? When you type that into your calculator, everyone type it in. Everyone's practicing. Square root of, only the square root part, negative 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times 0. You get 4. All over 4. So it splits. I'm going to get x equals 4 plus 4 over 4. And I'm going to get x equals 4 minus 4 over 4. So x equals 8 over 4, which is 2. And x equals 0 over 4, which is 0. You can have a 0 in your numerator, which would result in a 0. You can't have a 0 in your denominator. Okay? So we get x equals... 2 and 0, or 0 and 2, and x cannot equal what? What was it? Plus or minus 1. So is that any of the answers? No, so they're good. If one of the answers was plus or minus 1, say I got x equals 1 like this, say that was one of the answers, I would circle it, put an, a line through it, and say extraneous. So you do have to check because sometimes you will get answers that are the non-permissible values. And if they are, you're going to circle them and put extraneous. You're also going to know because they're not going to show up when you y1, y2. Okay? So everyone's going to practice these ones out in y1, y2 as well. So my y1 is going to equal 3 over x plus 1 plus 1 over x minus 2. No, x minus 1, sorry. And my y2 is going to equal 2. Now this is the catch. If you have the old calculators, you're going to have to put this in brackets like this, and then this in brackets. This in brackets like this, and then this in brackets. If you have the new ones, you can just go alpha y equals enter. Everyone's trying it out. You're going to get two of them. Two intersections. So when you go second trace five, enter, 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 you'll get one. And then you're going to go second trace five, and you need to move over to the other one, closer to the other one, to get the other one. Okay? So everyone's trying them out in their calculators. So you're, the answers, which are zero and then two. You have to get two answers. You have to do it twice. Okay, so pay attention. So you're going to have the old way, or you're going to have the new way. I'm going to do the new, so I'm going to go alpha y equals enter. And I'm going to go three over x plus one plus... Alpha y equals enter, 1 over x minus 1, and then the 2. Oh, I got the 2 and that's where we went wrong. Oh. Yeah, you need y1, y2, or it can't intersect. So it looks like this. You see there are two intersection spots? We only care about the x of the intersection. We don't care about the y. So we're going to go second, trace, 5. And I'm on this one, so I go enter, enter, enter. And I get 0. Don't care if it's a 2, 7, 27, 83. Don't care what the y is. 0. And then I go second, trace, 5, and I move over to the other one. So I'm going to pop up onto the red line, move over closer to the other one, and I'm going to go enter, enter, enter. And what's the answer to this one? 2. 2. I don't care what the y is. The y doesn't give me anything. You still get 0. You should get 0 and you should get 2. You need to move over to the 2. If you, just keep, if you just go second trace 5, enter, 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 you're doing the same thing over and over, you're going to get the same answer. What's if you go you second trace 5, alpha, y equals, enter. Gotcha. Yeah. If you have the old calculators, this top one has to be typed in as bracket, bracket, 3, Divided by bracket. Three isn't essential, but I do it anyways. It has to be the two brackets? Yep. Or else it doesn't know it's a fraction. The only way it knows it's a fraction is if you fraction the whole thing and then fraction the brackets. 
then plus bracket bracket one divided by the top brackets overkill, but I don't care. And I get the same graph. Bracket. You have to do bracket bracket. If you don't bracket it, you're in trouble. Yeah. Like, you're yeah, you need to. Um, Pardon? Well, it's your way to check it and know you're right. So it's not forced to do it all, ever. But yeah, you can do it. Yes. Okay? And when you get back, I'll go through it with you, okay? Okay.